So, with Gibura, much like with Bina, the I in its process of self-realization has come to a point when another form, uh, a level type of awareness must emerge. What emerges is Yesa, foundation. This is, I call it, the sentient self, the self that senses, the self that is aware of its environment. This self is all about interaction with other. Everything about the sentient self is suitable for interaction with other. And that is the focus of the I awareness at this stage in its self-realization, with the ultimate goal being the temporal present moment, which is just a step away now. It's ever so close. This is like the final stage of development prior to the temporal present moment. This is the realm of significance. In the pearl realm, we had a central meaning. The temporal mental realm of the solitary self we had subjective meaning, my meaning. This is what the world means to me, okay? In the realm of Yesod, the astral realm, we have significance. Now, significance is all about this interaction between self and other. This, there is an importance to that interaction, a significance, and it varies from interaction to interaction. Some are very significant, some are not at all significant, but it's all about the interaction of self and other. This is what the astral realm is. In human terms, it is the emotional realm. <clears throat> So everything, every perception in this realm is a perception of significance. How does this other relate to me? What impact does it have upon me? What importance does it have to me? Okay? So it's not only about other, it's also about self. It's the me that is feeling significance, the me that is sensing significance. And in this interaction between self and other, there is an infinite complexity. There is <clears throat> unpredictability. There is the unknown. <clears throat> the what if suddenly enters into all relationships with other, because we can't predict what other, how other is going to respond to us. But we get to know ourselves in this context by how we respond to other. Now that is the essence of character transformation. And this is the realm for humans of the character, okay? The astral character, the realm of significance. So, <clears throat> yes, Saad, 
the astral realm itself <clears throat> appears quite colorful, quite musical, quite fairy tale like, because it's all about the perception of significance. So all of our perceptions in the astral realm are colored by significance. They mean something special. Um, <clears throat> and it touches us at this very deep level of emotion, of significance. So this is the sentient body. It's the body that senses. We have to have these senses to function in relation to other. We have to be able to sense what other is expressing to us. Okay. Now these are the five senses, basically. <clears throat> they are not, at this point, tied to the physical sensory organs. They are the raw essence of the senses, the astral senses. So there are the five fundamental physical senses of sight, <clears throat> hearing, smell, taste, and touch. All of these have astral corollaries that are basically the same. They deliver the same sort of information to us. Now, these senses, <clears throat> astral senses, are all about the perception of essential meaning. They are ways in which we perceive essential meaning. The primary way in which we perceive essential meaning is visually. Through seeing something, we perceive its essential meaning, right? <clears throat> so these are essential ways that we need, me mechanisms that we need to perceive the essential meaning of self and other in this world where it's all about self-interacting with other, <clears throat> with other individual selves, okay? So I would add two senses on top of that. One sense would be the uh, emotional tone. What is the state, <clears throat> what is the emotional state at the moment? This is a sense that we perceive essential meaning through. External essential meaning is perceived by the emotional tone. The other is what I'll call the mind chatter. Now, this is primarily something that we experience in the temporal present moment not in the astral moment, but I'm going to include it here anyhow, because it's important. It's the mental chatter is another way that we perceive the general <clears throat> essential meaning of the present moment. Okay. <clears throat> so, the sentient self, the self that is totally focused on the interaction with other and the medium of significance in which that occurs. So, <clears throat> Yesod is called foundation, or Yesod means foundation, and it's called that because it truly is the foundation upon which the temporal present moment of time-space is built. It all, everything 
here in the physical realm <coughs> exists in the astral realm and is <coughs> essentially an, <coughs> a solitary self. That is what manifests here as the physical realm. We are all solitary selves. Okay? So, <clears throat> the astral realm, yes, so, is the foundation of the physical realm. Now, <clears throat> the paths which feed and create, yes, so, this astral realm of the solitary selves, I mean, of the sentient selves, because everything in the physical realm is a sentient self. It's all sentient. It all has ways of perceiving the essential meaning of everything in its environment. Okay? Everything has this faculty. In most things, that faculty is far different than it is for us humans, but it's still, everything has that faculty. Okay? So that's the essence of our interaction with everything, is essential meaning. Our communication of our essential meaning impacts everything around us. And the impact, the essential meaning being communicated by everything around us impacts us. That's the essence of the astral realm. So, the paths which feed into the astral realm, very first, now there is no direct connection here with Kether, okay, with the crown. <clears throat> but there is from Hukma there is a direct input from Hakma. All that essential meaning in Hakma is expressed in Yesar. In this very complex way of interactions. Okay? All the essential meaning of Hakma is interacting with itself. That's what's happening in Yisrael, okay? So there is this direct input of the essential meaning in Hokma, wisdom, to Yisrael. In other words, the astral self has a direct connection to that knowing, that wisdom of Hokma, okay? Then there is a direct hidden path connection with Bina as well. And this is the greater self reaching down into Yesod and putting its imprint, you know, reaffirming its imprint of the uniqueness that it is manifesting, that unique combination of essential meaning in that little particular refined ratio that is the sentient self. Next is the direct <coughs> emanation from Tiferet into Yesar. This is truly the descent of awareness into this new form of awareness. This is the sentient self filling the, uh, uh, no, the solitary self filling the sentient self and forming the sentient self. The sentient self is the solitary self, but existing in the realm of significance. This is how the solitary self 
exists in the realm of significance. It takes on all of these senses. Okay? This is the path of the sun, of Resh. Now, Resh means face. This is, you know, you really descending into your personality. <clears throat> this is the light that fills the personality, that solar radiance of the self that fills the personality. And it's what we transform the personality to clearly reflect is this solar light descending from Tiferet. This is our true, true self, essentially. Now, the next emanation comes from Gedula, and this is an air path, the path of Libra, and the letter Lamed. And Lamed is said to be the serpent uncoiled. Okay, Teth was the serpent coiled, and Lamed is the serpent uncoiled. This is <clears throat> the active life force descending from the individuality into the personality. And this is the reminder that we are all connected. This is the collective awareness This is our connection, our personal connection with the collective awareness. And that's that air path again. It adds something to the mix that is sort of un unexpected. And that is balance. In the astral, this interaction with other, we are always seeking balance. We're always trying for that balance, that, that peace with other, that equanimity, that equilibrium with other. And that is Lama that connection to the collectivity of awareness, to the collective uh, work, the collective goal, the collective aspiration we connect with through Lama. <clears throat> and it really pervades the astral realm. That's where <clears throat> the joy in the astral realm comes from. That connection with Gedula, that benign force permeating the astral realm, and it's part of what gives it this fairy tale like feel. <clears throat> because ultimately, <clears throat> all of these interactions with other are about the I realizing itself and how it must realize itself is for all of its little parts to interact with each other. Okay? And that happens here in this sequential realm. <clears throat> the final path comes from Gebura. And this, like Heth above, which gave birth to the solitary self, the individual self, and the temporal realm, the mental realm, here the individual self gives birth through this path from Gebura to the sentient self. And this is a water path again. None, Scorpio, okay? <clears throat> and through... 
through this path, the most powerful individualized aspect of self, of individual self, of the solitary self, the most unique, where, the part of itself most aware of its unique nature, takes on this personalized form where it suddenly becomes about interaction with other. And the whole, everything becomes infinitely more complex here in the astral realm through this descent. And this is the strongest imprint of the unique nature of the individual self into the astral realm. It's very powerful. This is why it's Scorpio. You know, because uh, Scorpio has the, uh, the sting. In other words, the individual has the power in this interaction with other to manifest severity or mercy. It has the ability to choose the nature of its interaction with other. Can choose either course. Libra says, be kind. Scorpio says, I will have my way. Okay. So the astral is this big mixing pot of choice, personal choice. Okay. So this says some interesting things to the geometry of the tree of life. As you can see, it forms the upper hexangle, or hexagon, rather. <clears throat> there is obviously an upper hexagon with Kether at the top and Yesod at the bottom, and a lower hexagon with Tiferet at the top and Malkuth at the bottom. So what we have just done is establish the upper hexagon. It's, it's sort of like the above mixes and becomes the below, okay? So the upper hexagon and is mirrored by the lower hexagon. And that transition point between the upper hexagon and the lower hexagon, the point that they both have in common, essentially, is the Aleph Resh crossing right in the middle, this right in the middle of the tree of life. And that's very, very significant. As we will see later, there are other paths that cross through that exact point. And they are perhaps the most significant of the hidden paths. They both cross right there, right in the Aleph Resh. Okay. So, we've got the upper hexagon, but we've also just established the second of the quadrangles. There's the upper quadrangle with Kether at the top, Tifereth at the bottom. There's the second middle quadrangle surrounding Aleph, Air, which has Tiferet at the top and Yesod at the bottom. And then there is the lower quadrangle surrounding the path of Mem, which has Yesod at the top and Malkuth at the bottom. 
So we have established that second quadrangle. Now this is really The eye must go through these phases of self, the solitary self and the sentient self, in order to manifest its process of self-realization at its final uh, culmination in the temporal present moment. It takes a mental body and an astral body for the eye to inhabit the temporal, physical, present moment. And so what we have just established is that middle section. <clears throat> Everything else is about the descent into the temporal present moment. Okay. Because we have now the bodies to, uh, oh dear, <clears throat> these are the bodies that the eye will inhabit as it descends into the temporal present moment. This is the medium through which the above becomes the below, and through which the below communicates with the above. Okay? Through the astral and mental bodies. These... <clears throat> these are, are, are vessels of travel. Okay? Now, the astral, this is the beginning of the final component of time-space. We had change, which is supernal and infinite. We had sequence, Gajula and Gabura. And now we have duration. And this is experience. Duration is an experience, pure and simple. And it's a personal experience. And it comes through that interaction with other. <clears throat> and that provides us with the experience of duration, okay? Which is the final component for time-space, okay? Change, sequence and duration equal time. Okay. <clears throat> so until <clears throat> until this point there is no time <clears throat> and no time space. The space part comes later, okay? <clears throat> okay. So that's yes thought. The astral realm and how what what composes the sentient self and the realm of significance. Okay. So next week will be or next time will be Netzach. Till then, bye-bye.